Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire 2. Let's get into this one. We are in Las Vegas. Uh, this is the best place I have to film. It's windy. We've got background noise, so I do apologize for that. I'm going to try to work my magic in post-production to get that stuff kind of dampened down for you guys. But with that being said, today was Industry Day, Industry Day which is the range day for SHOT Show. And I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, my top five things that I saw and some kind of uh, honorable mentions as well uh, as we go through the video. There was a lot to see, a lot to take in, and actually there is uh, just not enough room for me to talk about everything that's going on there. Uh, but I'm at least going to tell you guys the five things that I absolutely loved and uh, a few other things as well got my notes here so we are going to get right into it first and foremost is uh, Aero Precision was showing off their Lahar 30 I think is that that's how you pronounce it they have two different sizes on that basically uh, small, small bore and large bore and I was able to shoot both in 6.5 feet bore and 5.56 and um, I was thoroughly impressed with it with full powered ammunition uh, M193 and with, uh, I believe it was 143 grain Hornady BLD match ammo. Uh, the sound suppression on it from both of those were good, were really, really good. So I'm surprised at that and was really happy that they brought that out to uh, let us try it out. So the next booth I was really impressed with was Shadow Systems. They have uh, obviously been around for a number of years and have been producing a really high quality um, upgraded Glock, so to speak. So I really did like what I saw there, specifically their DR920P. This is going to be basically a Glock 17 length with a compensator that is uh, pinned on the end of it that ends up giving you an overall length that is going to be very similar to a Glock 34. It will fit Glock 34 magazines if you're interested in that. And I really did like how much that um, compensator end of that pistol really did the recoil. So get on some um, shadow systems for putting that together. And then naturally, one of the things they're known for when it comes to their polymer frame striker fired pistols is having a pretty decent trigger in it as well. The DR920P is going to have an aluminum shoe and then obviously they're really nice polished up trigger as well in comparison to a Glock that is. All right, so the next company I wanted to talk about was Palmetto State Armory. You guys know I'm a big fan of PSA. And I get it, they have a lot of memes going on about them and everything, but one thing that you cannot deny is that they have been hitting the AK, uh, the American-made AK market really, really hard. Last year they introduced the Chinese Spiker, and I think this year they're really going to push hard on 5.56 AKs. Specifically, some that take the Rock and Lock style magazine. Uh, in this case, I was running a 102 pattern rifle that had um, a uh, AC Unity style magazine, working great, didn't have any problems with it, even though it's extremely windy today and there was a lot of dust flying around, no issues whatsoever. But the uh, really interesting thing was their AK that accepts Sinag mags, uh, which I really, really did like. Not only did it accept AR pattern magazines, but it has a last round bolt hole open and then a bolt release as well. So I thought that was pretty cool and really did appreciate uh, PSA bringing those out. Okay, so honorable mention has to go to EAA. Uh, you know I've done a couple of videos on the Gerson MC-1911C and unfortunately I just didn't have really good experience with my particular one, but I did have a really good experience with EAA's uh, warranty claims uh, process. So that was uh, I guess a silver lining of it. However, one of the things that EAA is jumping into this year is going to be the 2011 market. And that's something I'm really interested in keeping an eye on to see how well EAA, from a budget-minded position, is going to offer a 2011-style pistol. And the great thing about it is they're going to offer it in 10 millimeter, 45 ACP, and 9 millimeter. So you can choose whichever caliber you like the most. Uh, I got to shoot both of those today and really had a good time shooting those. Uh, they do accept um, staccato magazines as well. So that is something else that I really did like 
not only the concept of providing a pistol, a 2011 that's going to be roughly around, uh, I'd say, $900 MSRP, but something that's also going to accept the uh, staccato magazines. If you so happen to have one or have access to those magazines, they'll be interchangeable. So that's pretty cool as well. One of the other companies that I was able to get uh, really surprised by was Henry. Uh, I have really not did, done too much when it comes to lever action style rifles, but uh, they did have one of their 357 38 special uh, lever action uh, rifles there. <laughs> it's been a long day, guys. And uh, they had it suppressed as well. So what blew me away was running uh, just standard 38 special uh, 124 grain uh, federal ammunition. Quietness of that rifle was extremely impressive. Not only was it extremely quiet, but you felt zero recoil whatsoever. You didn't even realize that you were shooting it. It actually felt more like a squib round going off. So um, I thought that was really cool and uh, thought that it offered a, an honorable mention as well. Okay, next up, I would say probably my number two most impressive thing. Uh, believe it or not, was Taurus. <laughs> you guys know that I have not been the biggest fan of Taurus, and I will have to say that uh, it was extremely interesting to see their new optics-ready revolver. That is something that you wouldn't think should go together, but it does. Uh, they have a proprietary plate that will accept the RMSC-style Optics, so I thought that was actually pretty cool for people who really do like red dots, uh, like to carry revolvers. Marrying those two was a brilliant idea. Now, I get the idea that revolvers are usually like pocket guns, not that type of thing, but for individuals who actually carry their revolvers in a Kydex holster or something to that effect, having a red dot uh, on it to especially help people who have fading eyesight is a really, really good idea. In addition to that, if you remove the red dot, then you have defensive style um, sights already built into the frame of the revolver. So, um, interesting concept from Taurus. I really did like it. In, 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 in addition to that, right next door to Taurus was Rossi. Rossi just introduced their new revolvers that were uh, kind of patterned along the line of uh, Yellowstone, because that's a big craze, I guess, right now. I really don't watch much TV, but I hear it's a good series. And what they ended up doing was just releasing their uh, three inch and six inch revolvers that um, had a release video very similar to the Yellowstone show. And uh, got to shoot them. Um, basically, Rossi is kind of uh, owned by Taurus. So to go from a Taurus revolver to a Rossi revolver and see the improvement that uh, they were able to do with the internals to allow more of a smoother double action, single action trigger pull was extremely exciting. And I, I thought that was really, really cool. In addition to that, they had their 44 Magnum lever gun uh, that I figured I'd throw a few rounds through and that was pretty cool as well. So for you guys who like wheel guns and lever guns, you know, Rossi and Taurus might be might be an option for you. Okay, so the most impressive thing that I saw at Industry Day was going to be from a company called Oracle Arms. And if you haven't checked them out, if you haven't heard about them, uh, they're a fairly new company and they're doing something to the 2011s that is somewhat unheard of. Um, they are taking their favorite duty platform pistol in the P320 and marrying it with the 2011. So you have a uh, upper frame and slide that is 2011, but the grip module or the grip portion, grip, the pistol grip of the pistol is going to be a polymer or aluminum attached just like the 2011. And it's going to be patterned after the P320, not necessarily the way that it feels or looks or the grip angle or anything like that, but more specifically to accept the P320 magazine. So they designed the lower part of the um, frame to accept 
the P320 magazine. That does a number of different things. Number one, it reduces the cost of your magazines. So you have the ability to go out and purchase any P320 magazine and you're good to go. You're ready to go. In addition to that, they have a couple of different um, sizes of that pistol. They have a compact and a full size, and then they have a couple different full sizes that are going to allow you to uh, maybe be a little bit more competitive focused or more duty focused. And that was one of the interesting things that they did was they tried to encompass concealed carry, competition shooters, and duty shooters as well. So all of those three things put together was really, really cool. All right, the last honorable mention that I want to talk about is going to be from Rock Island, and specifically their RIA-50. This pistol is really interesting because it has a lot of attributes that you would find in like an SP-01 Tactical, but doesn't have the same look and feel as an SP-01 Tactical. It does have a hammer-fired system on it, but it's going to be a flat back instead of a traditional um, bird eye style uh, hammer. So that was something that was really interesting. They had a, a few different ergonomic changes to it as well. And it, it ran exactly what you would expect a SP-01 Tactical to run. Very smooth, uh, light recoiling, and uh, a lot of fun to shoot. So that was really, really interesting. That's really all I got this time, guys. I really do appreciate you guys swinging by. More coverage coming this week as we go through uh, SHOT Show. Hopefully, it won't be as ridiculous as it is right now, but this is the best place for me to film. Uh, filming in my room with the lighting in there, not the best. But with that being said, really do appreciate it. This is on my backup channel, so if you would, please go ahead and uh, give me and share, a thumbs up, a comment, all that type of stuff. What are some of the things that you guys were looking for? Uh, I'm interested to see what you uh, have to say. With that being said, we'll go ahead and get down here. Thanks so much for swinging by. Catch you guys later. As always, free to Catch you later. Bye, y'all.